Good morning. Um, I'm from Perrin School in Hampshire. It's a secondary school. Um, we were successful in applying to be part of the Vision 2040 group. So this is an action research group working nationally, looking at these four themes. And the idea is that we look beyond the constraints of Ofsted or the ever-changing national curriculum or the changing policies in government to try and work out where schools have had the courage to try things. We collect them together and share them with other people. So we're looking for schools who've had the courage to already try some of these things. So Perrins has been asked to speak because we do something unique called transformational learning. Whilst I'm going to outline it briefly, it's the fact that we try something new that develops professional capital. When you try something new, it makes teachers think. They may not like it, but sometimes just making people think and evaluate what they're doing, even if they disagree, is a good thing to make them think. Going back to the notion of NQT, you do your NQT training, oh, don't worry, it'll be easier when you do your first, you know, you do your first year, you've got all your PowerPoints done. So the notion is, I'm done now, close the door, I've got my PowerPoints, I'm finished, I don't need any more CPD, I'm done. But it's changing that notion, how we can get people to continually think beyond their NQT year. So our transformational learning program aims to develop these skills in our um, learners in year seven. We have year sevens off the normal curriculum timetable for four hours a week. They do cross-curricular problem-based learning with eight different subject teachers teaching them sort of at once. Um, and they develop these kind of uh, skills. So the idea is we're looking at how they learn rather than necessarily what they learn and teaching them to, to think rather than sort of learn facts. In our school, these are the particular skills we work on. It could be used the six R's, habits of minds. It wouldn't matter necessarily which ones you use. The fact that you're asking them to work on how they think rather than what they're learning. And we're also lucky to be in our fifth year of our laptop scheme. So those schools that are trialling the iPads for the first or second year, we've been doing this for five years now, and we use e-portfolios where the students get to decide what they want to produce rather than just, I've done the worksheet, what should I do next, miss? It's, it, it becomes much more creative if you don't constrain the, the area that the students have got to work with. So how does this link back to professional capital? So these are the areas of professional mm -hmm. capital. In this particular um, way with our transformational learning then, it helps uh, teachers to change their, their focus in the classroom. Because we've got eight curriculum teachers, say the drama teacher's going to have to have a bit of maths to year seven level, etc. Um, it's not the knowledge that they're learning, but it's the, the slight change in their shift of a skill of a teacher. So more, instead of the deliverer of knowledge or the sage on the stage, you're the facilitator, the working out how the students, what they do if they get stuck, how to move them forward, which is a different kind of skill rather than standing, hiding behind your PowerPoint, knowing roughly what questions are going to come up. So it's changing the skills of the teachers to be more of a facilitator. Because the eight different cr cross-curricular subjects plan together, they have different expectations and share the trust together. By planning together, you get the social capital. And then the decision capital, you don't know really what's going to happen in these transformational learning lessons because it's problem solving. So you can't hide behind that PowerPoint and hide behind your knowledge because it's not about that. So this, the, the teachers get tested with their, and have to be challenged in their discretionary judgments in a safe environment and then they can take these into their own subject area. So briefly then, what I've done with this is looked, bought this uh, questionnaire about these things to our Teaching School Alliance and I asked the CPD leaders to ask, answer a questionnaire a little bit about how they feel they're developed in human capital in their school and um, social capital in their school. And these are the results, or not. Um, the, the results actually aren't important necessarily. Um, it was useful, though, to find out what schools in our teaching alliance had similar. But the important bit was what we're going to do about it next. When you do an evaluation, what next? And it was these things that we came up with. If you do this questionnaire, is there even a consensus within your SLT? If we ask the other teachers in the school about the social capital and human capital, do they have the same consensus? Could these discussions lead to evaluate CPD models in your school? When you, what do you do? We'll try a bit of yours. We'll, we'll help each other. Is there any overlap with any emerging leadership opportunities? 
Which areas of professional capital do you think have got the greatest impact on achievement? And something else that I'm not quite sure. But the idea is just to, to make people think about what they're going to do with this in their school. Okay.